Hey, this is Calvin. I am at the Aloe Yoga flagship store in Beverly Hills. Today's class is going to be a 45-minute recovery flow for athletes. And basically, just for those of you that train hard or work out a lot, this is going to be a class that helps you kind of get rid of some general soreness from whatever your sport is and sleep better and just recover in general. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out some of our awesome new content. And let's get to it. So this class is our yoga for recovery for athletes class. So I'm going to suggest that you have a, blo a block and a strap. Um, if you don't have a block at home, you can use a book or something of solid substance that's around that wide. And then if you don't have a strap, you probably have a belt, just use a belt instead. So to start out, we're going to go onto your back and you're going to take your strap or your belt or whatever you're using around your right foot and you're going to lift your right leg up to the ceiling. You can have the left foot flat like so and press the inner edge of the foot down. Feel like the thigh kind of draws in a little bit. Lift your right leg up as the outer right hip lengthens forward and try to stay wide across the chest. So you can be happy here. If you feel like you need a little more, extend the left leg out. If you choose to do that, it's very easy to let the leg kind of go, not floppy, but kind of open up a little bit. Try to work the inner thigh down as the right leg lifts up. And just continue to breathe. For today, I'm a little bit sore. I'm going to stay with the bent leg version. So you'll notice that with the right leg up, the side body tends to shorten a little bit. So feel like that outer right hip lengthens forward, and that'll keep the side body long. Take both sides of the strap into your right hand. Keep your left hip on the floor. So that's kind of the barometer for how far you go. And you're just going to start to take the right leg out to the side. So right around here is where my left hip gets light. It starts to come up off the floor. So this is where I'm going to stay. And I'll actually extend my bottom leg out for this one. So I could take my foot down here and the bottom hip will lift up. Please don't do that though. Try to keep both hips on the floor. Send that outer right hip forward and breathe. Keep the left thigh pressing down towards the floor. And then bring the leg back up to the center and release. Bend the right knee, foot flat, and then extend your left leg up. So from here, extend the outer left hip forward. Try to keep the right thigh tracking forward so the whole foot presses down, or if the leg goes out, the inner thigh releases down a little bit. Stay broad across the chest. So through these early stretches on your back, really work to establish your breathing pattern. Breathe nice and deep. If you can, breathe across the back of the throat. If for whatever reason you overheat really easily or you're not working on the breath too much, just try to breathe smooth. I think that's an easy kind of goal to, to strive for. And then from here, take both sides of the strap into your left hand. I'm going to extend the right leg out. Keeping the right hip down, I start to take the leg out to the side. And you'll notice I could go further, but you pause wherever your hip stays. And you'll notice it starts to get light. That's usually about where you want to stop. Keep the chest broad. Breathe. And then come on up and release it down. So from here, very basic. We're going to go into a spinal twist. So you're going to roll to the outer edge of your left hips, which means you bend the knees in, drop them to the left, and you scoot your left hip in so you're on the outside of the hip. The chest opens to the right, left hand on the outside of the right knee. So send that outer right hip forward, hug the thighs towards each other, and try to gaze past the right shoulder. Just get a little release in the mid and low back here. Continue to focus on your smooth breathing. Breath or two here. And then we'll switch sides. So take the knees over to the right, scoot the right hip in, and open your chest to the left. Hug the thighs towards each other. Open that left shoulder. Maybe gaze past the left hand if you can. And if you feel it all short in the torso here, send that outer left hip forward a little bit.
and come on back. So from here, we're just going to do a little bit to warm up the midsection, a little bit of ab work. Arms forward, exhale, lift your head and shoulders up. Inhale, extend the legs. Exhale, feet down, lift a little higher, and release. Exhale up, inhale, extend. Exhale, feet down, lift up, and release. Exhale up, inhale, extend. Feet down, lift a little higher, and release. And then one more time, exhale up, inhale, extend. Lift your chest a little higher while you're here. Take a few breaths. Lower your feet till they're almost at the floor and release it down. Interlace your fingers and flip your palms. Reach up. Try to straighten the arms at the elbows. If you have tighter shoulders, that won't happen. That's okay. Reach through the arms. Reach through the legs. And then hug your knees into your chest and rock on up to seated. From here... We're going to come into downward facing dog. So if you're sore, if you're stiff, if you're a runner, depending on your sports, if you have a tight body, keep the knees bent in down dog. So you'll start with the knees bent, spread the fingers wide, firm the upper arm, lift the hips high away from your hands. Maybe the legs straighten, maybe not. If straightening your legs makes you round your back, keep a bend in the knees. So for today, I'm going to keep a bend in the knees. Typically, I do in general. I have tighter hamstrings, so it's just more beneficial for me to create space in the torso. So as you're here, the center of the heels are heavy, the thighs press back, and then on your inhale, shift forward to plank. Shoulders directly over the hands. So the idea here is as the whole hand roots down, feel like your chest and upper body are moving forward as your legs and lower body are moving back. You just did a little bit of work in the midsection, so draw the belly in to support all that length and just take a few breaths. And then pull your hips back, down dog. From here, step your right foot forward. Turn your left heel down. Take your block, place it to the inside of the foot, and then reach your left arm up to the ceiling. So you might not need a block, you might have longer limbs, you might need the block on the higher setting. For today, I'll go higher setting. Let the right arm press into the leg. Reach your left arm high so your chest turns towards the left. Draw your right hip in a little bit as you bend into the leg and press your left foot down firmly. Feel like you really reach the arms apart and the legs apart. So it's like the thigh bones are moving away from each other. The arms are reaching away from each other to turn the chest. One more breath. And then take your hands down, downward facing dog. Reach through the arms, reach through the legs, and then please step your left foot forward. As you turn the right heel down, we'll take the left hand inside of the foot. Again, I'm going to go higher setting for today. If you want to have the block on a lower setting or the floor, go for it. Reach the arms apart. So the upper arms, they move apart. I'm turning my chest with that space. The left hip draws back, but I bend into my left leg as I press the right foot down. So the thigh bones are moving away from each other. If you can look past the right hand, awesome. If it doesn't feel good in the neck, just look to the side. And especially in these standing poses, that's when you really work to smooth out your breathing. You'll notice it's really easy to hold your breath or tense up. Try not to do that. And then hands down, downward facing dog. Take a breath or two, reach through the arms, reach through the legs. And step your right foot forward again. Walk it to the right a few inches. Get real strong with the left leg. Come up onto your fingertips. And then reach your arms back. Turn the biceps out so the palms face down. If you have tighter shoulders, the palms will face in. That's fine, but that broadens the chest. Draw the navel in. Bend into your right leg so your torso is moving forward. Your right leg bends deep and your left leg is reaching back. Take a few breaths here. And then downward facing dog. Reach through the arms, reach through the legs. Please step your left foot forward. Walk it to the left, it'll make it easier to balance. 
reach that right leg back, and then the chest opens, but the navel pulls in a little bit. Get strong with that right leg, bend the left knee deep, breathe. And see if you can reach the arms a little more so that the shoulders feel like they move away from the ears. One more breath. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward again. We'll take the left hand on the block. Draw the right thigh in. So when the lunge happens, we're going to twist. The leg likes to drop open. Don't let that happen. Draw the thigh in a little to the midline as the left leg reaches back and reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Try to lift weight out of the left arm by lifting up through the right one. Again, the thigh bones move apart. The arms move apart as the chest turns. And then downward facing dog. Take a breath, reach through the arms, reach through the legs. Make sure your whole hand is pressing down. So if you're feeling the thumb and index knuckle lifting off the floor, try turning the hands out a little. And then step your left foot forward, right hand down. Draw the left thigh in a little bit and reach your left arm high. Draw the right shoulder away from the ear. Bend into the left leg. And then take your hands down. From here, downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. So once you get back, you can interlace your fingers behind your back and reach your arms up and over. Or if you have tighter shoulders, I'm a little stiff today, so I'd say take your strap between your hands and reach your arms up and over. Try to draw the shoulders from the ears. Start with a little bend in the knees so you can press into the front of your foot a little bit firmer instead of sitting the weight in the heels. And then work towards straightening the legs a little or a lot. Try not to round your back too much. Feel like you're a little long in the front of the torso. And then stand on up. Place your strap off to the side. Step to the front of your mat. And then we'll start with a couple of traditional sun salutes. So Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach your arms high. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. Step back to plank. From plank, shift forward, lower halfway. Roll over your toes, upward facing dog and pull your hips back, down dog. And then breathe, reach through the arms, reach through the legs. One more breath here. Start to look forward, bend your knees, step, or some of you can hop to the front of the mat. Inhale halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Hands together at your heart. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step or jump back through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. And again, hold down dog. So traditionally, you'll hold about five breaths here. Uh, for me, it'll be about five. At home, it might be five. It might be seven. It might be three, depending on how fast you're breathing. But just stay here for a few breaths, essentially. And then bend the knees, look forward, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale halfway and exhale fold. Inhale all the way up, and hands together at your heart. One more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Step or jump it back through your vinyasa, or you can always just step straight into downward facing dog. Now this time, from down dog, come down onto your knees. 
sit back onto your heels and lift your chest up. For a couple breaths, spread the toes, try to press into the tops of all 10 toes. And as you sit back on the heels, it just lengthens the front of the ankle a little bit. Collect your breath. If you want to sit with your hands in your one hand inside of the other, hands on the knees, that's fine. Try to open the chest, slow your breathing. And then come on up to kneeling. Take your left leg out to the side, flex the heel so the toes point up, reach your right arm up to the ceiling, and then slide the left hand down the leg, parigasana. So you just get a little side stretch in here. Since this arm is technically overhead, the right arm, wrap the tricep forward so you have some space across the back of the shoulder. Really reach through the arm. Try not to be too heavy in this left arm. And then come on back, lower the arm down, and set your left knee down. With the left knee down, take the right leg out to the side, flex the heel, point the toes up, lift the left arm up as you wrap the tricep, slide the right hand down, and stretch the side body. Try to really reach through the left arm so you feel long from the hip through the hand, not too heavy with that right arm. And then come on up. Come back onto your knees, downward facing dog. From here, you're gonna step your right foot forward, turn the back heel down, and you're just gonna come into triangle pose. So have the block on its mid to high setting, I would say for most of us, unless you're very flexible. Take the hand onto the block, draw the right hip back as you press into the ball of the foot, and reach your left arm high. Try to reach through all four limbs. So you take up a lot of space here. The right shoulder draws from the ear. The left foot really presses down as the right side body gets long. And then just breathe. If looking past the left hand doesn't feel good in the neck, don't do it. And take one more breath here. Start to look down. As you do, take your hands down, spin to the ball of your left foot, step your left foot forward and cross your left ankle in front of your right. As you fold, bend the left knee, keep the right leg straight. Walk your hands to the left and draw your right hip back a little bit. Take a few breaths here, you'll feel it down the outside of the leg, outer hip a little bit, kind of depends on your body. and then come back to the center. Inhale halfway, and step back to down dog. Skip the vinyasa this time, just step back, reach through your arms, reach through your legs. And please step your left foot forward. Turn the right heel down, hand to the outside of the leg, and reach your right arm up. So that left hip firms as the ball of the left foot presses down, that stabilizes the left leg. As the right leg is strong, the left side body is lengthening, and I really reach my arms apart to turn my chest. So in the standing pose, it's very easy to kind of rely on the legs more than anything because they're holding all the body weight up. But if you can work to use the arms, the whole body becomes active. It almost makes it not easier on the legs, but it's not so dependent on the legs. And then you focus on your breathing. You work to create some space. Really stay strong with the top arm so that you're not dumping into the left shoulder. And as that arm's nice and light, the shoulder can draw away from the ear. And one more breath here. And then start to look down. Take your hand down, spin to the ball of your right foot. As you step forward, cross your right ankle in front of your left. Bend the right knee, keep your left leg straight. Twist to the right, and then draw your left hip back. Take a few breaths here. And especially, I like to call these more of like the stretchy poses. In your stretchy poses, focus on your breathing more than anything. So if you're holding warrior two triangle, whatever the, the standing poses are, it's kind of hard to control slowly breathing. So if you use your stretching postures to reestablish your breathing patterns, it'll carry over into your standing postures, which naturally are gonna have your heart rate rise. Now start to come back to the center, 
Release the crossing of the legs. Inhale halfway. And then step back to down dog. Take a couple breaths here in down dog. If you'd like a vinyasa, shift forward and take a vinyasa. Now from here, step your right foot forward, turn your left heel down, warrior two. So bend into your right leg. The back foot can be turned in or parallel, but don't let the foot turn out. So turning the foot in creates a little extra space in the low back across the left side instead of causing compression. As you bend into the right leg, keep the weight towards the heel. So if you notice your toes are gripping down, press into the heel more, use your left leg more. Reach your arms wide and let the navel draw in a little bit to help lift the torso and the front of the pelvis. Look past the right hand. If that's not available to you, just look to the left. Or if it doesn't feel good in your neck, look to the left. That's fine. But try to really reach the arms here as you're bending into the right leg. And as you notice while holding these poses, you might want to hold your breath or your heart rate starts to rise a little bit. Really work to control your breathing. And those of you practicing your ujjayi breathing at home, breathe across the back of the throat, in and out of the nose. Now from here, flip your right palm, reverse your warrior, reach the arm up and back. So try to get long from the hip through the hand, light with the left arm, maybe even let the left arm hang. And then hands down. Step back into downward facing dog. From down dog, step your feet together. And then lift your right leg up and back and open the hip up. Reach through your left heel. Firm your left hip. Any movement that feels good in the right leg, the knee, the ankle, what have you, feel free to make circles or move it around. And then set your foot down, downward facing dog. From here, step your left foot forward, warrior two. So the back foot parallel or turned in but not turned out. The left knee bends deep as the weight sits down into the heel and the arms reach apart. The navel draws in slightly to lift the front of the pelvis as you direct the tailbone down. Reach your arms nice and wide. And as you're holding here, notice that the shoulders tend to kind of lift for a lot of us. It's not the shoulder's job to keep the arms up. The arms are moving away from each other, creating space across the chest and upper back as you breathe. So similar to other poses we've talked about, the arms reach apart, the thighs are moving apart. You're almost taking up a lot of space here. And you won't be here for too much longer, so if you can bend a little deeper into that left leg, awesome. If not, no big deal. And then flip your left palm, reverse your warrior. Be light in the right arm or let it hang. Lift through that left arm so you're really long from hip through hand. And downward facing dog. Once you get there, step your feet together and lift your left leg up and back. Open the hip up. Reach down through the right heel. Firm the hip. Breathe deep. Any movement that feels good, have at it. And then set your foot down, downward facing dog. Now from here, step your right foot forward. Reach your chest forward, and then set the back knee down. Take your hands up to your right thigh, lift your chest high. So as you're nice and upright, bend into your right knee, but reach your left heel back, and start to turn your chest to the right. Reach your arms apart. Lift the chest high, stay strong with the left heel. Bend a little more. Hands down. Step back to down dog. Step your left foot forward. Put your right knee down. Keep the toes curled under. Lift the chest up. Start to turn to the left as you continue to reach back through the right heel and reach your arms wide.
Lift the chest up as you turn the shoulders. And downward facing dog. From here, walk your hands back to your feet. <laughs> Hook your big toes and fold forward. Now as you fold forward, let the elbows bend to the side. Drop the head down. Lift the top of the leg as you press the foot down. And take a couple circles in each direction with the neck. Notice if the neck is tensing up and you're looking straight down. Let the crown of the head drop. Inhale halfway, exhale hands to your hips, and stand on up. From here, step to the front of your mat. Once you get there, reach your arms down, turn your palms open so your chest is wide, the navel draws in, the thighs press back a little as the tailbone directs down, and then we're going to get into Sun Salute B, Surya Namaskar B. On your inhale, bend your knees, chair pose. And exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs. Inhale halfway, and step or jump it back through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. From here, right foot forward, left heel down. Inhale, arms up, warrior one, and hands down. Step back to plank through your vinyasa, or you can go straight to down dog. Left foot steps forward. Right heel turns down, second side, inhale, arms up, hands down through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. And then breathe, reach through the arms, reach through the legs, slow your breathing, firm the upper arm. Look forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale halfway, and exhale fold. Inhale, chair pose, and then stand on up, hands to your heart. Round number two. Inhale, chair, exhale fold. Inhale halfway, step or jump it back through your vinyasa or straight to down dog. From down dog without lifting the leg, just step your right foot forward, left heel down, inhale up, exhale hands down, step back, lower, roll over the toes, lift the chest, and pull your hips back. Left foot forward, right heel down, inhale up, and exhale hands down, step back to plank, lower, roll over the toes and pull your hips back. Reach through the arms, reach through the legs. Make sure the heels turn out just a little bit. As the center of the heel is nice and heavy, see if you can feel light in the toes, maybe even lifting the toes off the mat a little. As the whole hand presses down, reach the fingertips so the forearms rebound away from the floor. Bend your knees, look forward, step or jump. Inhale halfway, and exhale full. Inhale, chair pose, and then stand on up, hands to your heart. One more round. Inhale, chair, and exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway, step or jump it back through your vinyasa. From down dog, right foot forward, left heel down. Inhale up, hands down, step back. Make your way to down dog. Left foot forward, right heel down. Inhale up. Hands down. Step back through your vinyasa to down dog. Now from here, take child's pose. So take the knees a little wider than the hips. Sit back towards the heels, forehead on the floor. If you can't get your forehead to the mat, put it on the block. With the forehead down, crawl your fingertips forward. So just the fingertips are on the floor. And then crawl them out and to the right while you draw the left hip back slightly 
and you'll get a little stretch along the left side body. Keep that left hip drawing back. Make sure the hands walk out and to the right, not just to the right. And then come back to the center and walk out and to the left while you draw the right hip back. And then come back to the center, come on up to hands and knees. From here, curl the toes under, pick the hips up, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward and set your back knee down. Release the toes and reach your arms up for low lunge. Hands to your heart and twist to the right. So use the inhales, lengthen the chest. Try to lift the chest off the thigh a little bit so you're longer in the torso. Turn your shoulders. Stay here for another breath or two. And then be happy here or curl the back toes under and reach the left leg back, straightening the leg. Try to lift the torso off the thigh a little bit. Turn the shoulders, firm the right hip. Stay strong with the left leg to allow you to lengthen the torso forward. One more breath, hands down, downward facing dog, take your vinyasa or pull it back. And then please step your left foot forward, set your right knee down, sink the hips, reach your arms up, hands come to the heart and twist to the left. So turn the shoulders, firm the left hip, as the hips sink down, let the chest lift a little bit. Use the inhales to lengthen, the exhales to turn. And then be happy here, or if you'd like a little more, curl the back toes under and straighten that back leg, reaching back, having the thigh lift a little bit, keep turning. From here, take your hands to the floor, make your way to down dog however you'd like. Go ahead and walk your hands back to your feet. Take your feet a little bit closer, but keep them parallel. And then walk your hands out as far as you can to the right. Draw your left hip back a little bit while you do that. Take a few breaths here. And then we'll switch sides. Walk your hands out to the left and draw your right hip back a little bit. And then back to the center. Slowly roll up to standing then step your feet wide. So with your feet nice and wide, arms out, feet more or less underneath the hands. And on your exhale, fold forward, take your hands underneath your shoulders. As you reach your chest forward, get long in the front of the torso. Take your block if you'd like. You can have the hand on the floor. Center your left hand and reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Really lift through that right arm. And then take it down and we'll switch sides. With the right hand centered, reach your left arm up. and then take the hand down. From here, walk your hands over to your right leg, take a breath or two here. And then over to your left leg. And 
as you start to lift your chest up, turn your left leg out, take your hands down, and step into downward facing dog. So from down dog, shorten the distance of your down dog a few inches, just a little bit, and then step your feet out to the edges of your mat. So it's just a little shorter version, and the legs are wide. And then take your left hand, reach across your body for the outside of the right leg. Turn your chest, reach the left heel down. If you're in a stiffer frame, bend the knees, and you'll be able to turn the chest more. And then switch sides. So the left hand comes down. The right hand reaches across the leg. Turn your chest to the left. Maybe bend the knees so you turn the chest more. And then regular down dog. From here, shift forward to plank and lower down to your stomach. Release the toes on the tops of the feet. Reach your arms back as you push your palms into the floor and lift your chest up. As you lift the chest up, draw the navel in a little bit, hover the hands off the floor and reach them back. Really press the tops of the feet down so you feel the kneecaps start to lift off the floor a little bit. Try to press the tops of all 10 toes down and not let the feet turn too much. And then hover your feet a little bit. And then release it down. Come back up, let the feet hover a little bit, the inner thighs lift towards the ceiling, the arms hover, and then keep the arms back with the palms turning down, the biceps turning out, or if you'd like more, reach the arms forward with the triceps turning down. Really reach, go for length, not too much lift, focus more on the length. And then release it down, turn your head to the other side. and then hands next to the ribs. Curl your toes under and reach your heels back. From here, you're gonna do up dog with the feet like this in chaturanga. And just lift the chest up as you reach the heels back and pull your hips back, down dog. From here, lower down onto your knees. Take your left leg across the mat so it's at about a 45 degree angle and have your right foot with the shin parallel with the side of the mat. Turn towards the front of your mat, lift your chest high, and then you're gonna keep your right knee down, and all you're gonna do is, it might not lift at all, you're just gonna try to lift the right foot off the floor just a little bit, and release it down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn towards the back of the room, or the back of the mat, the right shin will be parallel with the back edge of the mat, left shin parallel or on the outer edge of the mat. Lift your chest up and just see if you can lift that left foot a little bit off the floor, working internal rotation, and release it down. We'll come back towards the front of the mat. Right shin on the edge of the mat, left shin parallel with the front edge. Lift the chest up. Try to lift the foot and set it down, back towards the back edge. Lift the chest high, and then work towards lifting that left foot. It's brutal, it'll be cramping, it's not fun, but it's good for you. Set it down. Come back towards the front one more time each side. Lift the chest, and lift the foot. Set it down. Last time, turn towards the back edge, lift the chest high, and lift that left foot, and then set it down. Come back towards the front of the mat. We'll take the right leg in front first, Sukhasana. Cross the legs at the center of the shin, flex the heel, and then walk your hands forward. If you have your block, maybe set the block down underneath the forehead. Reach through the heels and make sure the feet are maybe a little wider than knees or under the knees, but not closer. Start to slow your breathing and relax it.
Walk your hands back, lift your chest up, and switch sides. And then walk the hands out as you flex the heels. Forehead down, maybe on the block. Start to sit up. Take a few moments and just sit nice and tall. So relax your shoulders, lift your chest, take a few slow breaths. And thank you so much for tuning in today. See you soon.